This video is going to show how to use gradient descent to solve the nonlinear least squares problem. So in my previous video, we talked about using method, Newton's method, um, and um, maybe I'll recap what we did to just kind of get us back into this. Um, so we had a nonlinear least squares problem. I called this the tiny example. Um, we had three observations, and we've assumed that each one of these observations um, uh, each of these y values have been generated as e to the negative beta times this x value. Um, the problem is we don't know what beta is. And so we need, we're going to estimate this using nonlinear least squares. So remember, the least squares um, uh, uh, method is where you, you produce a, a, um, you know, a y hat value, a predicted value from this. Um, and you, um, you want to make that as close as possible to these y's um, in, in, in a squared sense. So um, if, we, if we come down, we had an objective function y minus this e to the negative beta x squared, and we want to make this thing as small as possible. And then I said, well, um, we can plot this, this cost function that we were calling j, and you'll see it has a nice bowl shape, which is, uh, which is going to make life fairly easy for us. And what we re really want to do is find where this problem, this, this j function, is at the bottom, okay, the, the smallest value. We want to minimize the sum of squared errors, which means finding the minimum of this j function. Now then, what I said was, um, what we really want to do is find the point where this j function is flat. Okay, so if we had a tangent to this curve, that tangent would be flat. So the slope of this curve is flat. So we can actually go find the, uh, the, the, the slope function, which is the first derivative. Um, if you haven't had calculus, don't worry about it. Just assume that there exists this, um, this slope function that we can find, and, and, um, and this is it. And so just to trace through this, um, we have negative slopes here. Those correspond to all these negative derivative values. Then at the value 0 0.20 something or other, we hit the bottom, which is where the, uh, the slope is 0. Then it becomes positive, and note the, uh, the, the slope function gets positive. All right, so key point, um, to minimize this, we want to find the point where the derivative equals zero. It's a root of this derivative function. All right, so then what we did was we, um, we used Newton's method. So I showed you um, how we could make a linear approximation of this curve. Um, and so the values close by the curve are very close to this, uh, this tangent. As you get further away, it's not so good. Um, but then uh, what we did with this, this linear function was we kind of extrapolated and uh, found the root of that, because it's really easy to find the root of a linear function. Um, and that told us where to go next. Okay, so this was our subsequent x, then we did the same thing, and uh, this thing converged to the root. All right, so using a very simple um, update formula, um, <clears throat> we could see that, uh, that Newton's method would converge in about three iterations to the value 2034, 0.2034. All right, now there's a problem with Newton's method. The problem is that it requires us to know what this second derivative is. Okay, so the, the second derivative of the cost function. Now you're probably thinking um, that's not a big deal with this little tiny problem, and you'd be right, but when we go to multivariate problems, Finding this second derivative of the cost function can be computationally very expensive. Okay, so we'd like to find a way to avoid this. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of uh, uh, detail on this, but um, one approach um, that, that's very, you know, kind of foreshadows a lot of advanced methods is called the secant method. So the idea of the secant method is instead of, you know, evaluating the derivative of the derivative function, okay, or that's called the second derivative. So what is the slope of this, of this um, uh, slope function? We're just going to approximate it 
so this, if, if you look at what's in the numerator, you've got um, the, the change between, you know, the, the function evaluated at the current value um, and another value. So that's like the rise of the function. In the denominator, we have the run. So you can think of this as just kind of a finite difference approximation to this second derivative. All right, that's called the secant method. Again, we're not gonna uh, spend much time on that because I wanna get to gradient descent. If you do this, then you, the key point with this is I don't need the second derivative of the cost function. And um, uh, that saves me um, you know, some, some work. And notice we get convergence in about three iterations to the same value. All right, um, so with gradient descent, we have a very similar update formula to the ones that we've just seen. So the update formula is um, the next value of the parameter is just the previous value. Um, we're going to take a step of size alpha. So alpha is a, a, a constant times the derivative. So, so the, the, the intuition of this is kind of simple. We're going to start out somewhere, so start out with a starting value, um, and then with Newton's method, what we did is we got very clever, and we did some, um, we did a linear approximation to get us really close to this. With gradient descent, we're going to take a hop down the, the, the function, so minus the gradient says which way is down, and so if this is my starting value, um, the gradient would tell me, hey, this way is down. So you want to take a hop in this direction. You want to go down the hill. Um, so I would take a hop of size, you know, alpha. So that, that's in the, in, in the x direction, and I go down. And then I look at my gradient function again, and I say, well, which way is down? And, uh, well, this way is down. And so I take another hop of size alpha. So that's alpha in this direction. And I keep doing that. And maybe I even, you know, hop over the bottom, um, but this is going to converge to uh, the, the the bottom of the hill. All right, so so that's all there is to gradient descent is we're just going to keep taking hops until we get uh, to get to the bottom of the hill. A um, couple things. This is called um, batched gradient descent as opposed to stochastic gradient descent, which we'll be covering in um, in a couple weeks. Now. Um, this, uh, the step size is really critical. Uh, it's also called the learning rate in, um, in machine learning. And, um, you know, getting that, that step size right is very important. Uh, instead of us just specifying some alpha, sometimes we'll do a line search. And so this, this describes that line search. The way to think about this is we're going to try a bunch of different alpha val values. So we'll take a small step, we'll take a medium-sized step, we'll take a big step, and we'll find out which one of those uh, gives us the, the, the smallest value of j. And so whichever of those alpha values at this current step gives us the best value of j is the one we're going to use. Another thing that sometimes is done is to have alpha decrease uh, as the iteration counter gets bigger. So you want to take big step sizes at first off and and, and have that step size decrease. I'm not going to implement either the line search or this decreasing alpha uh, in, in, in my simple algorithm. I just mentioned to them, mentioned them to you um, for completeness. So if we go look at my R code for the gradient descent function, it looks a whole lot like Newton's method. Uh, the only real difference here is the update formula. So with Newton's method, we had you know, the next b was equal to the previous b minus the gradient over the second derivative. Now it's just the step size times the second derivative. Now, um, what, I, what I did, if, if we start out with very good starting values, and remember we, we, we found some good starting values with, um, with linear regression last time. Um, so if you start out with, with very good starting values, we're starting out at like 0.200 and we have to get to 0 0.203. We don't have to go very far. You're going to see gradient descent converges very quickly. Instead of taking three iterations, it takes four iterations, but we didn't have to compute the second derivatives. Um, now I want to discuss 
what happens when your starting values are not that good. So uh, we, we were able to find very good starting values for this tiny problem. In, um, in a lot of situations, you won't have those good starting values. And so I've drawn a more um, global picture of this objective function. And, um, you know, so what we were looking at earlier was just this little slice because I assumed that we were close to the optimum. But if we don't start out close to the optimum, we have a number of hazards that might, um, might make it difficult. So if we were to start out somewhere over here, we'd have a huge problem. And here's that problem. Um, the, the slope of this function is almost zero. It's very flat out here. So if I start, you know, where's my gradient? Well, the gradient is pointing, gradient down is pointing this way. Um, but remember, I'm just taking some step size times that gradient or, or, or derivative, and that's almost zero. So if I were to start out over here, unless my step size was massive, um, I would be crawling along this branch forever to get to uh, an area that's interesting down here. I have exactly the opposite problem if I started out over here where the slope is absolutely massive. So unless I have a tiny, tiny step size, if I were to start out here, I have a very steep gradient. Um, I multiply that gradient times the step size and it's gonna send me way over here uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna over jump the, uh, the bottom. Okay, so um, that is a very difficult problem to, um, to overcome. Um, the way we overcome it is, is hopefully by having good starting values. Um, so um, I've been, tried this for a bunch of values. You can do this on your own. You have my, my uh, R code. Uh, just for variety's sake, I have run this in Python. And I've, I've actually, um, so let's, let's go, um, you know, run it in Python. So I've defined my, uh, my J function, my derivative, my second derivative. Um, we can look at the, at the um, cost function again. And here is that first derivative function called the gradient. And um, I ran the secant method, ran gradient descent. Um, now, let's go try, I, I, I was having a lot of fun with this uh, function. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have another version. You have my Python code available online. Um, so you have this Jupyter Notebook. I'm gonna start out with not a very good starting value. So remember the true optimum is like 0 0.200 something or other. Let's go up where the gradient gets steeper. So earlier we were starting out almost at the optimum value and we had to move just a, you know, a tiny bit to get to the, the, the best value because we had done that linear regression. What happens if I don't start out in a good place? Well, we can see the problem where uh, if we started out at point 0.1, the gradient's fairly steep and, and my step size is a little bit big. So I actually overshoot the minimum. Um, but then it, it takes me about another dozen or so iterations to work my way down the hill to the bottom. So this, this was bad, but not horrible. Um, if, I, if I increase the step size, what you're going to see is that now I way overshoot the minimum. So uh, I jump from here all the way up to here, and then you can see it takes me, you know, another 40 odd iterations to get back down to the bottom. And I actually wander around the bottom. So what you'll see, I've been printing out the gradient here, is that I'm actually, the gradient keeps changing sign. And so what, what that means is I've overshot, I keep overshooting the minimum, and that's, that's an indication that I better decrease my step size. So earlier I said, you know, you might want to decrease your step size when you get close to the minimum. This is a, uh, you know, an example for why that is. Um, in fact, I probably have the step size too big to begin with, but that's, a, that's another story. Let's try starting out a little bit too far on the other side. So I'm going to start out at 0.4. Now if we go back to this, um, this picture, 0.4 isn't horrible. If I started out up here, it would be horrible, but it's still going to take us a bit longer. So if I start out at 0.4, I start taking these step sizes. The step size naturally gets smaller 
because we're multiplying the step by the gradient and the gradient's getting smaller. So you're gonna see these steps get smaller, but um, uh, it still takes about you know 14 iterations, whereas before we uh, converged in only four. Um, I just tried the different step size here. And um, all right, so that's, that's, um, that's it for gradient descent. Um, you know, the, 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 the trick again is uh, good starting values and um, keeping an eye on that step size. Um, those, are, those are the keys to this.